Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Woohoo! Well, uh, thanks for ditching out on keynotes, if you were even there. Um, <laughs> my name's Robin Bergeron. Um, I'm the community architect for Ansible. Uh, I organized this fine track with a bunch of amazing volunteers who wanted to talk about the cool Ansible stuff they're doing. So uh, I wish everybody wasn't in keynotes because they probably want to hear this. But oh well. Anyways, uh, these are the fine people who work on a thing called Software Factory uh, at Red Hat. This is Maria. This is Alan. This is Heikel. Uh, and they're going to talk. And uh, I'm going to hope that we don't have a stampede in here in about 15 minutes when everybody else comes over. Um, yeah. So Sounds good. thanks for joining us. And I'm going to stick this over there. And I guess this is the thing you ask questions into. So yeah. So I'm here with my co-workers, Alan Pevic. He's an engineering manager at Red Hat. He works uh, with the RDO team and also uh, the upstream uh, stable branch for OpenStack. And uh, um, Heiko Gamar, and he's an RDO engineer, has worked uh, for Fedora, with a Fedora and CentOS as well, communities. So lots of experience with upstream communities. Let me introduce Maria. He is product manager for the software factory and uh, lots of experience with product management at other companies before joining Red Hat. So let me first introduce uh, what is RDO. This is our use case, <coughs> RPM distribution of OpenStack, but it is also a community of OpenStack engineers uh, helping you to deploy OpenStack. That's our main mission. And in order to do that, <coughs> we are packaging lots of upstream projects, it's over 200 packages, and it's growing. So what is in the package? So in the package, we have RPM, where we build from upstream sources, and then from the other side, we have spec distribution specification, where we define building steps and dependencies and patches in order to get this working. We need to have a system which uh, it is basically source code, this spec file. So we need to have version control system called this git uh, on a public file problem. It's community oriented. And uh, it builds on the same tools that upstream has, like a Garrett reviews. And then on top of each changes, we do automated testing and validation. So for contribution, so that CI systems. So uh, we follow all these upstream changes as they happen on the master branch. Uh, and then we validate each change. So that's in order we can release as close possible to the upstream. So when there is any change, it's immediately producing the packaging. So just to give you an overview of what the changes of the last cycle, we had 2,000 contributors merging 10,000 of commits in the hundreds of projects hundreds of commits per day. Just now alone was 1,000 commits, and that was just a short cycle. Okata was five months instead of six. So as I said, spec file needs, needs to be validated after each upstream change. Uh, if you are waiting for the release, it would be too late. So if you wait for the milestone release, that's like already months in the, in the cycle. And then it would be too much to catch up. So we need to test all the dependencies as well. So integration tests need to happen on each change again because it can have ripple effects. So test platform must be able to handle all of that. So how we are doing that? Hi, cool. Now it's yep. your turn. Okay. Uh, so now let's roll up our sleeves and see how we do an RPM factory. So we're building upon some earlier tooling. So the first one is DeLorean. What's DeLorean? DeLorean is a tool that builds up, uh, continuously uh, pe uh, pe RPM packaging from upstream sources. So it allows us to detect uh, integration issue very early. So it can also generate the full package repository that we use for integration testing. And it acts as what we call the master RPM repository. And if you would like to know more about DeLorean, which is a general purpose continuous packaging build tool, you, can, you may want to look at this blog post. And then to automate all the tedious packaging tasks we have, we use the RDO packaging client, 
which does things like flattening patches from Git, uh, also submitting reviews for you, and also uh, bumping version and many other stuffs that are very repetitive. So we also reuse the very same tooling that we Red Hat and also community ba Red Hat based distribution uses for building RPM like Koji. Koji is like a packaging build farm uh, that builds and stores RPM. So Koji basically creates for you sandboxes that you use for building packages. And we use uh, an instance provided by CentOS project that is called the Community Ball, Ball System that lives in this, um, sorry, URL. Then let's talk about so, uh, how to build RPM factory out of Software Factory. So Software Factory is basically a continuous integration slash continuous deployment uh, platform based on OpenStack infrastructure. It uses the very same tools like Garrett for code hosting and reviewing. Also, we rely on Zool and currently Jenkins for job orchestration. Uh, Software Factory is looking to transition to Zool v3, which allows to use only Zool and Ansible to run jobs and ditch Jenkins altogether. And uh, also it manages project dependencies when building testing environment, which is provided by Zool. And also we use another OpenStack infrastructure building blocks that is not pool, but will spoon for you job executors and terminate them for you when your testing jobs are finished. And also it provides smart commit gating using Zool. So which is basically running a set of jobs before merging things and having your CI reporting status. Okay, you can, CI says, okay, you can merge this. CI says, no, you can't merge this. This is broken and stuff like that. Well, if you're familiar with OpenStack infrastructure, that's pretty much the same workflow. And also the configuration of software factory is using the everything as code pattern. So you don't need to go through web interfaces or anything. You can manage your configuration through Software Factory as a usual configuration repository. And it also provides a flexible workflow based on reviewing and testing code before prior merging it. So thanks to that, we aggregated all these toolings the one from the RPM world and the one from OpenStack Infra world to build a community platform to build the RDO. So we have a software factory instance that is branded for RDO, that hosts all our packaging repositories and also the very little set of patches we have. And also it acts every time we have an upstream changes building packages that we test and all the packaging changes are also reviewed through Garrett. And the same goes for the patch, and all is tested through Zoo, Jenkins, Notepool, and built through CBS. So the workflow looks kind of like that. So we put an Ansible stamp on all the parts using Ansible, which are mostly the CI jobs, like the Erdio trunk CI jobs, the triple OCI jobs, which are um, also so used upstream in triple O. We also have our own packaging CI jobs and also start CBA jobs that are used to test updates. So Ansible is pretty used everywhere in our infrastructure. We use a project called Weirdo uh, to reuse the same tests that are run in upstream gates to test our to test RDO. So you may want to look at this project. So let's see a few use cases. So first use case, a change happened upstream. So we have a dollar and job that is triggered and I will retrieve all the sources from upstream and then the packaging recipes from RDO and we'll try to build a package out of it. 
Well, first, first, in the first case, it works. Perfect. Second case, it fails. What happens when it fails? Okay, we just create a placeholder patch on review.rdoproject.org that will be open against the proper branch and proper repository just to say, hey, maintainers, we want, you, we want to tell you that we can't build the, uh, the, master, the master branch currently, so please fix it. And obviously, the patch is supposed to fail, or otherwise it wouldn't respect the usual green, uh, the red-green refactor cycles. So, all the use case. We have a change on a stable branch. It's, this is pretty much the same more flow, but with a slight difference. Uh, whenever we have a new change, it triggers a scratch bolt on CBS. A scratch bolt is basically this, almost the same thing as an official bolt, but it's kind of not registered to the database and not published. It's just to see if we can build the package in the actual build environment. And, it will, and if it succeeds, it will return a CI score based on that, and it will send you a link to the build log, so the, if it fails, then the packagers can see why it fails. And also, the build artifacts are retrieved uh, into, by, into the do Zool jobs just to run few tests, additional tests. But if it's, uh, then it is verified by CI, then we, we trigger a non-scratch build if a core maintainer approves it. And if it succeeds, then we just publish the package and then we merge and close the review. If it doesn't work, then we discard the um, artifact and then the review gets a minus two score. And the patch is not merged, obviously. So then the user use case is the very rare case when we have distro-specific patches. Most of the time it happens on master when we have few uh, issues, a few bugs, and we want to not to prevent promotion so we can test other components. We try to backport patches or backports and merge patches temporarily just to move things forward. But what we do is that we, try, we re trigger three repository, upstream sources, obviously, uh, the packaging uh, repository, and then the patches repository, and try to build the package. But the, thing, the nice thing is that we use levering, levering Garrett uh, reviews to manage a, a chain of patches using open reviews. We don't merge reviews. That allows us to keep a full record of the history of patches. For instance, we may have some area distro specific patches that lives across multiple releases, so they get often replaced. We want to keep that history somehow. So that's how we do it. And the advantage, the advantage is that you don't need to be an expert on, on Git to rebase a patch. If it's straightforward, you just have to click a button on Garrett and gets rebased for you. Get, and also, we ensure the quality of patches by testing them, by running jobs. And this way, it makes it easier to deal with patches when you have multiple packages working together. Uh, for instance, I, let's say for a Nova, a Nova project, we may have the RDO team working on the packages. We may have some Nova upstream package maintainers coming in to help us maintaining the package. We may have random uh, RDO contributors who say, hey, I want to scratch my own itch, so I want to fix that package and provide a patch. So that's a very common, um, common topic. Uh, when you do RPM packaging, you want to make it easier to collaborate. So now I'm giving, uh, ba giving uh, it back to Maria. So we've been talking about RDO, but obviously all this tooling that we uh, are presenting here can be used to build any other kind of software. Uh, the ex idea to expose RDO here is to show you something that's quickly changing and has a lot of uh, um, commits. So for the Okada cycle, uh, 919 commits. 
86 contributors. This is not, um, uh, this is specific for, for the RDO project. And uh, about 230 builds, failed builds caption, captured by DeLorean. And this happens very quickly. So obviously if you're using OpenStack or wants to start consuming it, uh, we urge you to try this. Uh, these packages are available within 12 hours of upstream uh, release. Um, we think that this better processes and a better way to bring in newcomers to your community or to your project that you're working on or to your team and the company that you're working on. Uh, obviously all these tools are open source and you can um, use them. We're just giving you use cases of something that's very um, um, specific to, to what we're doing, but you can use that as a baseline to see, hey, it works. And obviously we're promoting tools that are part of OpenStack Infra because that's the way that we've been working and we think this is a really good way to build community. So Garrett versus GitHub pull request is also something that we want you to, to, to talk about. And then, you know, continue to grow your community, continue working with your teams, or also in my case, I'm really interested on how I continue to collaborate with partners and customers as we bring in their changes to a particular release of OpenStack and how we maintain them instead of having to backport changes over into, uh, into it. So it allows everybody to work on the same platform, to see uh, code transparency. Everybody um, has access to all the changes that have been made. You, you can um, declare who can promote changes and who can't, and just reviewing them together. Um, it's quicker to onboard newcomers to your project, uh, new customers that are coming in, in my case, uh, partners that want to also work with the customer. Uh, so it brings that uh, clarity into uh, the work that we're doing together with OpenStack. And uh, if you want to join us, obviously, again, one more time, these are all uh, upstream and open source. Uh, Software Factory Project IO is the Software Factory uh, version that's targeted to build the actual Software Factory project, but also builds distributed CI, which is another tool that we build uh, and we use at Red Hat with our partners. Uh, Skydive uh, network, network Analyzer uh, tool is built using uh, this same kind of tooling and the same kind of processes and DeLorean as well. And then we have reviewed our RDO project.org, which is basically software factory rebranded for the use of RDO. It's open, you can go check it out. Uh, and we are packaging their RDO as well as uh, ops tools, which is uh, monitoring tools that we use for OpenStack. The idea is that you can see a wide variety of projects, software that we're building, and we're building them um, using this, this way. Um, and then just you know, keep in touch with us. This is, this is where we are and uh, where we're living. Do you have any specific questions around um, the tools that we showed you today or uh, any Ansible specific questions? As you can see, Ansible was pervasive uh, everywhere here. Uh, if you use Ansible, uh, in your organization or with your work. We urge you to look at these tools as a way of um, building uh, or using tooling and, and using these processes to help you build your CI CD pipelines. And there are no other questions. I'm going to show you a list of other um, uh, meetings uh, or, or presentations that are happening today at Summit. If you see one of these uh, that catches your uh, interest, uh, you can go check them out. Uh, they're in and around here. These were are also um, today. So if you like the presentation or want to hear more about it, um, those are our, our way to contact us and like us on the app. And thank you for joining us. Questions? They did not have questions. Do you have any questions? Oh, there is, sorry. Somebody say a question. No okay. questions. I guess it was clear as mud. So, great, oh. great presentation, sorry. Uh, looking through a few things. Are, are you also looking, it looks like there's a good onboarding capability. Are you also looking to potentially extend Ansible into more of like a, uh, an orchestration tool here as well? to do more than what you currently do right now from bringing up your, your systems and um, making sure your code's up to speed for certain things. Um, could you repeat your question? Sorry. 
I, you said using Ansible as more? Of an orchestrator? So you're familiar with a, an NFVO within NFV, right? It's a larger orchestrator where you, you onboard certain systems, you configure systems, you yep. automate that system. Are you using Zool at all? Am I using Zool? No. But, all right. But, but I'm just looking to see. I didn't. I saw some capabilities inside of here. I think that's something that I that would be the first place to look at. Uh, what do you guys think? And Zool is that? Yeah, Zool. Zool, yeah. Zool is just particular for development. It's not for deployment, definitely. But yeah, the, in this case, particular yeah. case, we are using Ansible to drive CI. It's right. not used as a deployment tool. Yeah, definitely can be. It's it's not our use case in RDO. It is used in, for example, triple O more and more. Right. It runs upgrades and stuff like that. So it is used in related projects, but just not directly in the, our infrastructure. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. What's the time?